always tell these young corpsmen, uh, you know, when we're talking about what we do and mentoring them, how uh, our successes come from those that went before us. You build your own success, but you got to know who came before you and that, the, you know, these guys stand on the shoulders of giants. <coughs> so you're one of those giants. Well, I stood on the top of the shoulders of giants, those PFCs and corporals who did the fighting up there, for which I got a lot of credit. Yes, sir. But I would also tell you that I mentioned the, the importance of integrating the corpsman chaplain with the units. Mm. That provided them the opportunity, if you want to call it that, to be up front. Because in my battalion, which was all grunts and rifle company stuff, I mean, that was my battalion surgeon was there. My company had a corpsman who's still living in San Diego, California. I saw him a couple of weeks ago. Yes, sir. But it also provided an opportunity for you to get hurt. And as you know, we lost a number of corpsmen and doctors mm -hmm. uh, during that operation because they were up too close. Mm. But the, the purpose of the assignment in those days and the surgical work that was done ashore was primarily to keep the patient alive till he could get him back to your hospital. Right. And uh, once they were there, then maybe from there went to Honolulu, from there on back somewhere in the States. Through the, through the system. But the, yes. my point is that uh, if you're with the Marines, you're going to find yourself up front. And by putting those uh, corpsmen and doctors up there with us, they were up front. That was good for us as patients. Sure. But bad for them because the exposure that, that gave them to the, the living hell that came down in water shells and yes, sir. artillery shells and all that other stuff up front. But uh, the whole Navy system deserves a lot of credit for that. I heard General Krulak say it once. I'm not sure uh, if it was his quote or not. But when he said it, he said, no Marine ever took a hill out of the sight of a Navy corpsman. And I believe that to be true. I would subscribe to that. Yes, sir. I mean, they were with us every step of the way. Huh? No question about that. Yeah. I wonder if any of you gentlemen have a question for the general. Um, yes, sir. I think my question has to do with the raising of the flag on Iwo Jima and specifically about Doc Bradley, um, you know, his role in that, you know, being the only corpsman in that picture um, and also surviving it, you know, surviving the ordeal. Um, and I think it kind of goes in place also with, like you said, like the corpsmen were always up close with their Marines. And I feel like that picture kind of shows, kind of shows that exactly that there you it, have it. It proves Bradley. my point precisely. And I'm delighted he was in it. And uh, of course, I got to know his son, James Bradley, who wrote the book, Flags of Our Fathers. And uh, mm. I know that uh, John Bradley was the, the kind of guy that his father described. He, he was very modest. He never talked to his family about what he did. They didn't know he had a Navy cross. They didn't know these things about him. He just kept it hidden in a box in the attic. And these days, I try to tell our survivors that, please, talk to your family. Tell them what you did. The reason they don't is they went through such horror on that island. They don't believe you can understand if you didn't have some exposure to it. They just don't think you can understand what they're talking about when they tell you how much blood and gore there was on that arm. It's hard to get them to talk, but I think you're exactly right when you point out that that demonstrates very clearly that uh, the system that we had was good for us, and it put the corpsmen in danger, but like the rest of us, they were there to do what they had to do, and they did it, did it well. Well, most of these docs, I think, will tell you for them to be successful at what they do, in any independent duty, whether it's at sea, on our surface ships, or with the Marines, uh, the one thing they got to have is trust. And so being up forward with their platoon, training, uh, living, eating together, they gain that trust and, and they develop that's, the that's relationship they have That's what the system did. Have. That's yes, what sir. the system did. It, it, the Marines had trust that if they needed to call him, he'd be there. And he always was. And I think it goes the other way also that your doc. Your corpsman, your corpsman has to trust the Marines also that if yeah. we're working on one of the Marines doing our job, that well, the Marines are going to protect us and let us kind well, of do Well, that's exactly why we, we trained to together. They trained like Marines. Right. You know, they, they didn't sit back inside and watch the Marines and hope somebody would get hurt. 
they were out there plugging along on the ground just like the rest of us. And that also <laughs> helped breed a healthy relationship between the two. And as you probably may not have heard expressed this way, but part of the success of the Marines, as far as I'm concerned, is the fact that we build that personal confidence and the confidence of teamwork into our young recruits and never let them forget it. So uh, it's the teamwork that pays off. You may be a hero individually, but the battle's going to be won by teamwork between you and your fellow Marines and other units like yours to go all the way to the top. Now that was my first exposure to what today is called the concept of servant leadership. But the principles of servant leadership are is if you take care of your troops, you're going to do well. Thank you.